Oh, thank you. That's a marvelous question. Girl Be Heard is a political theater activist group. So we make compelling uh, shows and poems and stories and so much more uh, with young women and femmes between the ages of, what is it, like 12? 12, 12 to 21. There we go, 12 to 21. And uh, we just keep expanding and bringing in such beautiful, talented individuals. We have performed everywhere. But actually, what are some places we performed, Alyssa? Uh, we've been at the White House, the UN, the Supreme Court. We opened up in Trinidad and Bermuda. We've toured. We're a nonprofit organization, so the grants and the donations that people make cover the trips that we take to further teach other women and girls and female identifying people Ooh. about social justice topics. Yeah. 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 Young women, I personally have been in the uh, organization back since 2013, and throughout that time, I have developed my stage presence, my writing capabilities, my performance capabilities. And it's amazing because a lot of young women will come in like, "Oh, I'm not even an artist. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't write. I can't sing. I can't dance. I can't whatever." And we're like, mm, "But actually, you can. Yeah, and like, you're going to, and then you're going to like slay and be the best mother." Ooh person on the entire planet so like yeah we really just hone young people's crafts and help them become the people they never even thought they could be and beyond that <laughs> and speaking of hone crafts I don't play guitar in front of people much this will be this is like maybe my first legit time like for real for real all right so in the grain of Erica Badu I am an artist and sensitive about my stuff so just give me love, hold space for me, and uh, I thank y'all again just for coming out on this rainy Saturday. I was going to say beautiful. It's a beautiful rainy day, actually, because we're alive, right? We're alive and making art, so nothing better than that. All right. Let's get it. to be a love poem. This is my story intertwined with my mind and all the opportunities missed because of a psyche gone blind to faith, to reason, to all the things I needed, overachiever to the point of excess. My life was mess, but the books healed me. Every time I needed salvation, the school system acquiesced and I yearned for it. School was not a love poem when the bullies chided me for being everything they imagined wanting, and my home was a hell I could never flaunt, except as a lie to pass the detector of administrators, I never stopped believing in the power of my own potential. Even when the demons did. I was never smart enough to outwit them, but my intellect did protect me. When psych ward stations became the only home left to see, I remained in my studies, consistently persevering. It was never ideal. But it was a position I maintained because though my brain made me exile, though the kids remained vile, I refused a lack of realization for my dreams. I used to know what a wish was for. New textbooks and savior classrooms, teachers that knew my capabilities and students that could see me. But even without these things, the institution still somehow saved me. Even when the breakdowns were in reach, I never gave up. And now as I sit 
and wait for the day I can excavate my narrative and find a life with more halls and lecturers, taking my time and molding it into something worthy. I feel a sense of hope I can retrieve because my education has always held importance. And I said this wasn't a love poem. It is declaration of my independence and my studies and a world where nothing can hinder because sticks and stones broke my spirits but my bones growing weary my bones growing weary under their words but not the way my passion burns never that and i would lie to say that the tests weren't at times debilitating and i would lie to say that the tests weren't at times debilitating and I would lie, even though the A's were as straight as the ducks I thought were in my row, I would lie to say that the tests weren't at times debilitating. And I would lie to say the school was at times a weakening, depression making everything difficult under my major. But I'd be remiss if I did not say it's where I found the strength to be everything my poetry and I encapsulate. When pain became the niche I was accustomed to, the poems held me through. Discovering slam at the age of 14 due to an English teacher seeing my necessity. Where would I be without the verse and the longing to be more than ever allowed to me? Yes, I stumbled, but the metaphor caught my fall, and I broke down in the newspaper editor's room but made a poem, and when I wasn't working in the library, I sat in the stairwell, navigating every hell and giving it voice, because I'd be damned if I couldn't rejoice in some manner. And who to thank but the walls of my school that fostered this need for something real, something tangible like paper and pen, and fed this necessity to mold beginning from the multitudinous ends that have been facing me. This poem isn't perfect, but neither is me. And school wasn't perfect, but it was what kept my heart beating. My life was a suicide statistic that didn't help me pass any math class. But I digress. I digress. The texture of prose was most palatable. And worlds would I have been so blessed to experience this. When there was nowhere else to immerse myself but there, I took the challenge and made it mine. Reality, a sore that seemed to fester. I used to know what a wish was for. I used to know until wishing became a chore, and I decided that I'd be fairy godmother to my destiny, creating realism more befitting of me. My education was a fate no doctor or narcotic could take, but forever will I rise, despite those that mind, even my own. Just for the record, that's not a real thing. In case anyone was wondering. No kidding. Without further ado. Privilege. Definition. A special right, advantage, or immunity granted only to a particular person or group of people. Sounds about white, right? Hey. Wrong. Apparently, it's black. So, what is my black privilege? Having my history written in pencil. So it is easier to erase and more difficult to trace black privilege. It's having the God who looks like you recreated in your oppressor's image and having to bow down to him. Black privilege is the benefit of never having to play an extreme sport to get an adrenaline rush, my privilege. Mm. It's telling my future son to look death in the face and do as it says, never reach into his pocket for his ID. But to never forget who he is, no, his name is Kunta and not Toby. Can't they understand that black privilege? Is the possibility of my brother becoming a hashtag? Another name to say in a protest, black privilege? Is my brother's death being the reason for said protest? Mm. Our privilege is who needs orange soda when you've been sun-kissed? Mm. There is royalty in your veins and history in your hair that speaks volumes. They will try to silence you. I mean, scare you straight black privilege. It's when their ignorance becomes your noose. When their blindfold becomes the cloth they gag you with, they will laugh at your pain and call it dark humor. Black privilege is when they trick you into thinking your essence can be sold, bought, packaged, or rejected. Black privilege is Emmett Till, Tamir Rice, Sandra Bland, Freddie Gray, Alton Sterling, Eric Garner, Frank Ombre, Trayvon Martin, Jesse Washington, Donye Jones, Emantic Bradford, Jamel Robertson, Latasha Harlan, Charlena Lyles, Rakia Boyd. Black privilege is the fact that the list can go on. Hmm. There will never be enough hashtags for my people. 
black privilege is to be silenced by the very thing you yell for, to have rights only on paper, to be the greatest ghostwriter history has never seen, to be the science and not the scientists. Our privilege is to hold nations in your tongue and speak in pyramids.